Good morning. It is Monday, the fifth day of October 2020. And once again, you have joined me for five minutes with Thalia. I am so happy to have you with me today. It's a wet day, but it's a beautiful day. You know why? Because we have been spared, we have been graced with life. And you being able to see this this morning means that you're alive. You may not be feeling well, but you are alive. And so we give God glory. We give God the praise. We give him the honor. Today, I will be speaking about sexual immorality. Many years ago, someone shared with me that the person they were dating had finally asked them to marry them. They were rather excited Oh my God, it was finally happening after a few months of dating. But there was one problem, one big problem. That gentleman had the nerve to ask this decent young lady, very well spoken young lady, a young lady who had so much going for her, a young lady who had professed Christianity to its highest regard. He had the nerve to ask her if after marriage she would engage in anal sex. That was disturbing. 1 Corinthians 6.18 admonishes us that our body is the temple of God. And any part of sexual immorality should never be in our thought. Many today are taking rides. Some of us are taking a ride from that married neighbor, taking a ride with that married young woman who is a co-worker. How is that affecting you on a daily basis as a Christian? Are you having sexual thoughts? Are you somehow thinking about an encounter? In the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 5, it says, No one who commits sexual sins will enter heaven. We have to be so mindful of everything that we do as a Christian when it comes to sexual immorality. Our body, my body, is the temple of God. And it's easy for me to sit here this morning and say all the things that I want to say. But in actual facts, it can be very difficult. Difficult, especially if there are problems in the home. Especially if you're married and going through some situation. And you're looking for that one person who will hear you out. That one person who may be able to relate to your situation. And so you find yourself talking on a daily basis and getting closer and closer to this individual. But what does God say about this? Don't forget that scripture. We should shun the very appearance of evil. Anything that would become a problem later on, we should flee from it. We should run fast. Don't allow it to become a part of our daily life. When we think about sexual morality, we're thinking of fornication. We should be thinking of adultery. We should be thinking of masturbation. We should be thinking of anything at all that has to do with sexual desires. When God created Adam and Eve, his whole idea was for marriage. And of course, many of us, including myself, we went astray. And we did things otherwise. But it is not too late. We can go to that awesome God and we can ask him for forgiveness. The word says, he is faithful, he is awesome, he is wonderful, and more than anything else, he loves us. And he's waiting for us to become his children. Many right now are so stressed, so stressed, especially financially. But you profess Christianity. So you're going to think seriously about the next time that ex calls you and you are married 
or were married and you're not yet divorced, you're going to start thinking about that, that situation that you found yourself in just about this time last year. You're going to seriously think about the, this past weekend and where you may have found yourself and how close you were to the edge. Run from it. Run from it. Don't allow it to be your life or part of your life. God loves each of us. He loves us so much that he allowed his only son to die for us. And we can't live how we want and make it to heaven. We will not make it to heaven. And so I admonish all of you today, let's put away sexual immorality. Let's erase those thoughts from our minds. Have a wonderful day, a great week. I love you and God loves you more.